Picking out a motor for your rig can certainly be confusing and it could leave you puzzled, but this video is really meant to enlighten you regarding Castle's motors and the KV of what you're going to want to run for whatever application that you're using. Now I'm going to be clearing that up today and I actually have a little chart made out that we will eventually be filling completely throughout this video. Each of these categories will be defined per motor. So we are going to be rating each motor torque 1 to 10, 10 being the most torque, 1 being, you know, nothing. Now price 1 to 10, pretty much if you're paying let's say $200 for a motor, are you going to be getting that performance back? Now for the setup and scale, this is definitely one to explain. Pretty much the more applications that the motor has, the higher the market value because you could run a 2200 in a 10 scale and you could also run it in let's say an 8th scale or a 7th scale. You know, you just have to know your applications. So we're going to be going over all of that. All right, so first up we have the 1406 7700 kV motor. This is a maximum of 2S LiPo that you can run on this. You cannot run three because the kV is just way too high. Now, why am I showing an older generation motor? Well, one, this is the only one that I had. Two, I also wanted to discuss if you were to have the newer version 3800 kV. This is pretty much more of an RPM speed motor. So let's say if you run this on 2S on road, this would be a great motor. If you wanna bash and do everything, pretty much you're gonna to wanna to go with the 3800 kV 1406 or the 1410, which is just a little bit taller than this guy. Put this guy right over here. So regarding the torque value, I am going to give this one a three to four. Now, why am I starting out with a crazy rating like that already? Well, 7,700 kV at 2S LiPo, I'm gonna give it a three. And let's say if you were to be running the censored newer version, I would give that a four if it were to be the 3,800 kV. So it's gonna have a lot of torque and it's pretty much gonna be a great 10 scale basher motor. Coming in at a solid price of 84.95 USD, the 1406 actually has a pretty decent rating on this one. Um, I'm going to give it a 7, reason being this is pretty much your staple 10 scale motor. Now, if you were to be going with the newer version of this, it makes it even more worth it. Aside the fact that it's waterproof, it is also censored capable. So you'll have a lot of torque at low RPM, no cogging, and less heat issues. The market that this motor is going to fall under is mostly 10 scales and some 1 14th and 16 scales 14 scales being your low z mini series and your traxxas 1 16 scales so pretty much a lot of people will run the 3800 kv as a big block upgrade for those smaller cars so we're going to be going with the number seven on this one pretty solid score but it's still nowhere near to where a couple of those guys stack up This is the 1415. So pretty much this is the biggest 14 series motor that you can buy. Uh, so it is 2400 kV and this is the optional five millimeter shaft, which is awesome. It's super durable and robust. And this also comes with a sensor port. So of course running it censored is gonna make everything a lot better. Being that the kV is a little bit low, actually a lot a bit lower than 7700, pretty much this is going to have a higher voltage rating. So. I'm gonna give this a five being that it is capable of 4S LiPo. So it can certainly throw around your 10th scale easily, you know, to a certain point, but running it in an eighth scale might not have enough torque. Coming in at 104.95 USD, the 1405-2400 kV, I will have to give this thing a nine. Now, why is it that high? Well, if you guys recall, 84.95 for the 1406 and $5 more if you get the 1410 or the 1415 it's gonna be about $20 more so pretty much you're getting a lot more motor and it's censored waterproof everything that you really want to bash around and have a good time on 4s while not breaking the bank either the only downside to this motor even though that it does have more torque 
I'm gonna say that this motor is directed only for the 10 scale series. It's gonna be a little bit too big to run in the 1 16th or 1 14th scales, and it's gonna be a little bit too small for the eighth scale 10 pounder range. So I'm gonna give this a seven. You know, now I am still keeping, it's not gonna be six or five or four because it still has a solid price value. So you will not go wrong regardless. We're starting to get kind of chunky now. This is the 1800 KV 15 series, 15 twelfths. So this is the beginning of the eighth scale motor size. This motor comes sensor capable, waterproof desolder, uh, solder tabs on top. Amazing quality and super nice heat sinks to dissipate heat. So a size comparison, here we go. The 1512 is a little bit shorter than the 1415, but it's still gonna pack a lot of punch regarding the torque value, just because it's a bigger can. This motor is gonna get a solid number seven regarding its torque value. Four to six S LiPo capability, as well as being censored, will give it a lot of torque at low RPM, as well as higher RPM running higher voltage than the 1415 and obviously the 1406. As we get higher in power output, we get higher in price. So coming in at 154.95 USD, I'm gonna give the 1512 a six. Now, the reason why this rating is kind of low because it's gonna be really explained in this one. Setup and scales that you would be putting the 1512-1800 KV in will be the 8th scale E-Buggy or E-Truggy and some 110 scales. It's pretty small enough to still be put in a 10 scale, so it could still be pretty good regarding that. Now, why I'm going to be giving this a lower number on uh, market value is just because this motor was designed to be ran on 4S. So that will be why this number will be a little bit lower than the next motor we're going to be reviewing. Mainly because if you were to be running the E-Buggy class with this motor, because it's designed to be raced, you're gonna be running it on four cells. Obviously, if you're running a little bit lower of a voltage, you're gonna have a little bit less torque. So that's gonna be the reason, and it's all gonna be connected. Regarding a bash setup, you could still certainly bash with this motor, and it's a beast of a motor to bash with, but it is very, very uncommon. A lot of people know of the motor that we're gonna be discussing next, which is why this has a lower market value. This is probably the AK-47 of RC Motors. Everyone knows about this motor. This is pretty much the go-to upgrade if you were to go to a hobby shop, if you wanted something a little bit more than what you currently have in your eighth scale. So I'm gonna be explaining exactly why I put such a bold statement on this motor. All right, so for torque, this motor is capable of a maximum of 6S LiPo. The only difference between these two are can size and KV. So you're gonna have a lot more RPM per volt with this motor, but that's not gonna be influencing the torque. The way that I am giving my scores is gonna be on the application that it's gonna be used for. So we're gonna be using the 1512 on 4S in an e-buggy and we're going to be using the 1515 on a 8th scale basher. So you're going to want to run this on 6S, and pretty much this is what everyone does with this motor to begin with. Coming in at only $5 over the 1512 at 159.95 USD, I'm going to give the 2208. Now that is significantly higher than the 1512. You could obviously still bash with without having to gear to the moon because the KV is a lot lower in both of them. So you're gonna have a better medium of power and accessibility of what your setup needs with this motor. So to assess my bold statement that I stated earlier, you can run it in a lot of 10 scale vehicles. It's considered the big block upgrade of let's say your Rustler, Stampede, Bandit, or anything of that scale area. You could also run it in an A-scale Typhon. It's really meant for that. Typhon, Talion, any kind of truggy like the E-Revo or Lozy 8T, the eighth scale version. You could even run it in a 1 7 scale Limitless and Fraction or a Traxxas X01. You just have to gear accordingly. The motor can certainly throw that car around like a rag doll. We even hit 131 miles an hour with this motor. And it's still not the torquiest, most powerful thing that we have on this table. So I'm gonna give this motor a solid number 10 because this hits a solid market that everyone knows about. And it's pretty much the go-to motor of what you really want for these scales. 
So if you guys recall an earlier video, pretty much I ran this exact motor with the Mamba Monster X 8S on 8S in my Limitless and we hit over 100 miles an hour five times in a row. So this motor has the durability, redundancy, and just the absolute consistency of what you want in a big block motor. So we're gonna be explaining why this motor is such a legendary motor. So the predecessor of this 1717 that we're looking at that originated in the X01 actually had a maximum voltage rating of 6S LiPo, which is 25 volts. Now this one has a maximum voltage rating of 8S LiPo. In fact, they actually alpha tested this thing on 9S. I would absolutely not recommend running it on 9S whatsoever, but this motor is an absolute beast on 8S. So I'm gonna give this torque value rating a number nine. So being that this is a number nine, you could pretty much put this in anything for it to really make a solid statement for what kind of motor it is. Coming in at 189.95 USD, the 1717 is exactly $30 more than the 2200 1515. Now you're getting a hell of a lot more motor for that price so i'm gonna give this an eight yeah the price is a little bit more on the more expensive side but what you're getting you're pretty much getting a solid motor for its size so absolutely worth it so regarding the market this motor hits a wide variety damn near covers 90 percent of the rc world so what's awesome about this is that you can run it in an x max and it could still throw it around like a rag doll in fact i ran this in my 30 pound creighton 8s as you're gonna see <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, threw it around like a rag doll. So that is with this motor running 8S. You could still put it in a seven scale limitless infraction or even a Traxxas X01. Any eight scale vehicle pretty much is going to enjoy this motor without it being absolute overkill. And believe it or not, some 110 scale vehicles. If you guys haven't realized the mounting holes for this, you can actually mount this motor, if you guys can see, with the exact pattern that the 14 series can. So you can still mount it in a 10 scale vehicle, which is impeccable. So I'm giving this an absolute 10. So this hits the absolute most market out of all the motors that we're gonna be reviewing. I feel like if I throw this at someone, I could knock them out. Coming in at over two pounds, we have the absolute biggest motor that Castle has to offer. Three to 12 S voltage capable, twin sensor ports, for accessibility reasons and solder tabs this motor is possibly the one and done motor that you're really gonna need for anything big I'm not even going to explain this one I'm sure you guys know at a hefty price tag of 249.95 USD I'm gonna be giving the 2028 a number seven. Why am I only giving the 2028 800 kV a seven? Well, pretty much it's a necessary evil. Just like if you buy a sports car, let's say Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren. Well, if you get an oil change for it, you're not gonna be buying conventional oil. <laughs> it's kind of a necessary evil. You know, you're gonna have to spend a lot on a vehicle that you likely already spent a grand on. Now where the 800 kV will absolutely make up for its price tag is its application. If you want torque, this motor is it period end of story so this motor is going to cover our quarter scale fifth scale and one six scale you could even put it in a one seven scale but it's absolutely not optional you know you're probably going to have to run it on 10 or 12 s to even get some kind of rpm out of it but keep in mind that's not the purpose and application of this motor so i'm going to give this a solid nine i pretty much added all the numbers up and we're going to see which one holds the most weight in the rc market as well as just rc in general Bam, right there. So the 1717, as I stated, was legendary, making its first debut in 2011. It was in the first vehicle that actually hit 100 miles an hour. That shook everyone up. You could still do it with the 14, 15, 1800, 2200, but this has the back-to-back -back efforts in making it that much more redundant. Pretty much, that's where this motor lies, as well as the market. This covers 90% of the RC market. You're covering pretty much everything from here down. We're gonna have the adrenaline freaks that are somehow going to put this motor in a 10 scale as well as this can be still ran in a Lozy Super Baja Ray or even a Creighton 8S with respect you're gonna to have to know the application and gear it the right way but keep in mind that does not make this motor better than everything else everything has an absolute application 
a proper application. If you're going to be running a big vehicle like a Creighton 8S, you're going to need something like this, or hopefully in the future if Castle comes out with something in the middle where you don't have so little KV. But you're also going to want everything for a certain purpose. Everything needs to be geared and tuned the right way for optimal use. Therefore, making every single one of these motors a solid place on the market. And I am really happy to own every single one of them. So if you guys still have a question regarding a setup that you have and it's different from anything that I stated, make sure to leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to follow Innovation RC on Instagram for inside pictures, videos, and stuff you won't see on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe for more. I really appreciate all of you guys watching. Have a good one. All right, all right, I'll do it again. Ready? Completely messed up cube, here we go. Ha, no, but guess what? It wasn't a full solve. Still looks good though.